Your team forecast first, sponsored by Ozark Insurance. Thank you for joining. This is your forecast first. Well, today was much warmer and it was nice and dry as well. Still, we're staying nice and dry. However, you can start to see some showers beginning to move in from the west and they will be here tomorrow. I'll have details on what you can expect in just a few. Local 33 News at 10 starts right now. Jasmine, thank you tonight. How a looming decision from our nation's highest court could change how our state's courts examine the past. More details on Louisiana's spike in COVID cases and when a vaccine could reach you. And a good evening to you at 10 o'clock. I'm Harrison Gold. And I'm Abby Rocha. Thank you for joining us for Local 33 News at 10. Now new tonight, a Louisiana inmate is asking the nation's highest court to give him the right to a new trial after a non-unanimous jury convicted him. Thedrick Edwards is serving life without parole for armed robbery, rape and kidnapping. The only black member of the jury in that case found Edwards not guilty. The U.S. Supreme Court has already ruled that the Sixth Amendment establishes the right to a unanimous jury in federal and state courts. The justices heard arguments today about whether in whose convictions became final before that decision can now take advantage of it. To handle that. It might be that um, the unanimity rule allows more guilty people to go free than it stops innocent people from uh, being convicted. Or at least it's just not certain. Now, Edwards is one of about 1,500 Louisiana inmates still in prison after a non-unanimous jury verdict. Well, that Supreme Court case is sparking plenty of reactions here in Louisiana. I caught up with some of them. Whether you saw it with one argument. Louisiana's non-unanimous jury scheme was thoroughly racist and discriminatory in its origin. Or the other. A supermajority verdict does not render a trial fundamentally unfair, nor does it seriously undermine factual accuracy of the verdict. The Supreme Court's impending decision on whether to throw out past convictions by split juries will affect Louisiana more than any other state, and that's no coincidence. We should accept these cases being retried or whatever process they have to go through. Jerome Morgan spent a chunk of his life at Angola after a split jury convicted him of something a judge later ruled he didn't do. I spent 20 years there uh, fighting for my innocence uh, and also just growing up. Now he says the justice system must grow up and reconsider cases of some 1,500 Louisiana inmates still serving time after non-unanimous verdicts. That's our responsibility as a society, as a government, and as a court system. But even some who support Louisiana's 2018 move requiring unanimous juries for future verdicts say applying it retroactively would flood the courts with attempted appeals and plenty of questions. Surely we have so many people from earlier cases Back in the 80s, 70s, people are dead, no longer around. Uh, things are destroyed, cases are gone, uh, witnesses' memories are gone. That would be extremely difficult to do. Requiring new trials in long final criminal cases would be impossible in some and particularly unfair to the victims of these crimes. Though criminal justice reform advocates maintain that's a lower risk than what others may think and one they'll just have to take. Judicial expediency and the cost of a new trial really has to be weighed with whether or not people are languishing in prison on a wrongful conviction. This is up to the Supreme Court to decide. Very uh, bright people on all sides of these arguments in the Supreme Court. Whatever the justices decide here could mark one of the Supreme Court's first major rulings since President Trump named Amy Coney Barrett to the bench, a Louisiana native among the deciders of this Louisiana case. And while that hearing wrapped up today, the Supreme Court could still take a few months to reach its decision. Looking now at today's COVID-19 numbers for Louisiana, 3,600 new cases and a near 50 deaths reported today alone. That's on more than 65,000 deaths. Now, an important note here, uh, 1,500 of those cases are from a backlog that dates back to April. Hospitalizations, meantime, continue to jump and currently sit at around 1,200 people here in our state. And some strong new guidance from the White House today saying everyone over 65 or with significant health conditions should not enter any indoor spaces where someone is unmasked and have all groceries and medications delivered. They also say anybody under 40 needs to assume they became infected over Thanksgiving if they gathered with anybody outside their immediate household. 
State officials fear hospitals could soon reach capacity, exhausting health care resources during this third COVID spike. NBC Local 33's Jonah Gilmore unpacks the trends we're seeing and when a vaccine could reach Louisiana. It's the backward step Louisiana took in the fight against COVID-19 that has Governor Edwards saying these words. And this should not come as a surprise to anybody. Louisiana's COVID data is raising major concerns. Over the last uh, few weeks, the numbers in Louisiana have not been encouraging. Um, they are all trending in the wrong direction, whether it's positivity, uh, cases, um, uh, hospitalizations, and most recently, uh, deaths. At the top of the list, hospitalizations. In the month of November, we doubled the number of folks who were in the hospital in Louisiana with COVID-19. We started uh, the month with just under 600. We ended up with well over uh, 1,200. The state is now in its third spike and officials say a vaccine is on the way. We have two vaccines that appear to be over 90% effective. They appear to be very safe and they are nearly 100% effective at, uh, at preventing severe COVID disease. Those first doses will be distributed to healthcare workers, nursing home residents, and staff, but it's unclear how many there will actually be to go around. It's not possible to precisely answer how many doses we get uh, out of the first shipment. Jonah Gilmore, NBC Local 33 News. Now the governor says the first batch of vaccines could be here as early as this month. And with COVID-19 cases trending upwards in the holiday season upon us, some COVID-19 test sites are seeing some massive turnout. Earlier today, Ascension Parish and Auctioner Health opened drive through testing at the Lamar Dixon Expo Center. That site reopens tomorrow at 9 a.m. and stays open until 3 p.m. tomorrow. Testing will be free to area residents, and those wishing to be tested are being asked right now to bring an ID and an insurance card. We definitely, this turnout has been absolutely amazing. We didn't know they were here waiting on us. They honestly were here when we showed up. Um, it was all over the news. People are posting it on Facebook. There's bulletins everywhere. So it's a really, really a great turnout just to reach out to the community for those who can't get testing on a normal basis. Experts remind people they can get tested for free at several locations throughout the area. We've got a link to those locations on our website to get tested. That's brproud.com. Taking you down to Lutcher, Louisiana now, St. James Parish leaders are discussing a plan for the yearly Christmas bonfires along the levee. Every year, the town of Lutcher lights the way for Papa Noel on Christmas Eve. This year, Santa may need a backup plan. The annual event brings in thousands of people every year, but as COVID-19 numbers continue to increase, many residents in the area are worried the bonfires will be canceled. Residents are concerned about the economic impact this could have on their town. As of right now, there's only two or three bonfires be, even being attempted to being built. So I don't know what's going to happen, but it, it's really discouraging. It does, it's not looking good. The parish president says he is working closely with the governor's office to see what the best course of action for the bonfires will be. Now in other festivities, organizers of the annual South Downs Mardi Gras Parade in Baton Rouge have decided to cancel next year's parade and ball. Crew President Tad Holler made that announcement today, saying the health and safety of the public and members is their primary responsibility. Holler says they will still be producing doubloons and t-shirts for sale. Coming up, one local family is reinventing a family tradition this Christmas, turning grief into a holiday miracle for those in need. And how an Academy for Special Needs Kids has served the Baton Rouge area for about a decade. We'll take you inside this week's Family First, but the news at 10 returns in two.
Welcome back with the holidays right around the corner. One family has found a way to share tradition with those in need. NBC Local 33's Kennedy Walker has the story. Christmas time is here. Families are getting together to spend more time around the tree and find some new traditions along the way. It was fun for them. For the Ard family, that means stuffing their stockings. As the kids have grown, so has the tradition. And it all started 20 years ago. Like we'd much rather open our stockings first than our actual Christmas presents. But in 2018, the holidays took a turn for the worst. The oldest of Angela Ard's three sons passed away. Losing a child is is just unimaginable. The family had no idea how they were going to keep up their tradition without Dylan, but through their grief, they came up with a way to keep his memory alive with a new tradition, giving back to those Santa can't reach. My son had a great passion for helping the homeless. Dylan's heavenly stocking remembers a kid with a big heart and a dream to help others. In his honor, the family delivers Christmas stockings filled with presents for those in need each one filled with a little love and a little bit of Dylan's Christmas spirit. Stockings were our favorite thing and that was his favorite thing, so why not carry that on for him? This year, the Ard family is checking their list twice, delivering a sleigh full of gifts to local homeless shelters. The goal, of course, is to, to meet as many needs as we can. I know the shelters are at capacity and there's, because of COVID, there's more people than normal living, you know, having to stay out on the streets. In a year where so many have lost so much, Angela says she plans on keeping the tradition going and sharing kindness with everyone, just like Dylan did. Kennedy Walker, NBC Local 33 News. A heartwarming story there. Now, if you would like to donate and help the Ard family spread some Christmas cheer, head over to our website for more information. Now, it's usually the most wonderful time of the year, but the holidays are bound to be more difficult in 2020, especially for children. A new survey shows two thirds of parents are worrying about their children's mental health the longer the pandemic continues. Pediatric psychologist with Nationwide Children's Hospital says it's important to prepare kids for what's ahead. They say families should have honest conversations about how their tradi traditions may change this year and encourage kids to talk about their feelings and get creative with baking lessons, family game nights, or start new traditions. Well, speaking of families, Giving Tuesday has wrapped up, but you can still support some local organizations in need. This fall, you may recall, we featured St. Lillian Academy, now celebrating a decade of service for children with special needs. Here's Chad Savity with Family First. Family First is sponsored by Peyton Murphy at the Murphy Law Firm. We were all worried, what are we going to do? Wiley wasn't really um, the best behavior in finding a spot for him. There just wasn't the right fit. Parents Chandler and Major Middendorf needed something different for their son Wiley, who struggled with communication from a young age. With the help of other families with similar needs, St. Lillian Academy was founded. We wanted to continue that experience into a school setting where we could bring therapy, intervention, and education onto the same campus and provide that holistic experience where the child was the center of the focus and not being brought to scattered services around town. St. Lillian, bringing all that together in one, in one cohesive unit, it allows uh, the families to be a family after school, but also he gets all the therapies and they all work together. They communicate with each other, the teachers, the therapists, to make sure they're getting the right curriculum for that child. For Wiley, St. Lillian has instilled confidence and enhanced his communication. We've really seen him grow and prosper because of, uh, because of everything and the love they felt here. It's really an amazing place. The school was able to help develop him into a program that had used IT to help him communicate along with traditional classroom settings, but also uh, like the ABA therapist work with him with his behavior. So it really has molded him into a, a wonderful child to be able to get out the community and do things that he wants to do. Now celebrating 10 years, St. Lillian has moved into a new facility on Goodwood Boulevard. However, the financial hurdles of operating during a pandemic have been tough. To help its mission, today the school kicked off its 24-hour online giving day. It has been a very challenging year, but the families keep us invested and we're going to work hard to raise those funds that we need to keep doing what we do because it's, it's definitely um, the right thing 
to do. And with that, there's obviously need more needs and more uh, more dollars are needed to support the school. And so it's really critical now so we can grow it and get the community what it really needs out there for these children. Chad Savity with Family First. They can find out the latest on this story on our website, brproud.com. Now time for the forecast. Meteorologist Jasmine Lomax says get your umbrella. That's right. We are looking at showers moving in overnight close to sunrise. That does mean possibly a wet commute for you. And then as we head into the afternoon, those showers continue. I'll have details on when they end and what you can expect after the break.